In research labs, it is often necessary to visualize tiny objects. For example, in a biolab, one may need to observe cells, bacteria, or a virus. In a material research lab, one may need to see the details of a material surface. In a solid-state physics lab, one may need to take a close look at a nano device. But how is this done in a lab? How do we observe tiny objects that we cannot see with our naked eye? One of the most convenient ways to see such tiny objects is to use an optical microscope. Simply place the object of interest underneath the microscope's objective lens and adjust the distance between the object and the lens. The optics inside the microscope bend the light beam reflected from the object and project the amplified image to your eyes or camera, allowing you to get a close look at the tiny object. There is, however, a limitation to optical microscopes, the size of the object. There is a limit to the size of objects seen under the microscope, which is the visible light wavelength. This length scale, which is of the order of a few hundred nanometers, characterizes how sharp a light beam can be tuned. If the object we try to observe is a lot smaller than one micrometer, then we simply cannot get a clear amplified view of it using an optical microscope. One alternative to optical microscopy is the electron microscope. This method overcomes the visible light wavelength limitation. One of the most commonly used electron microscopes in research labs is called the Scanning Electron Microscope, or SEM. In a SEM, a beam of high energy electrons is focused to a tiny dot on the surface of the sample. The beam is controlled to scan over the sample surface. At each point, the focused high energy electron beam kicks out lower energy electrons inside the sample, which are collected by a detector. Because the composition or surface profile vary from point to point on the sample, the detector would measure different signal strengths. This gives the contrast which allows us to build an image of the sample surface as the electron beam scans. The magnification of the SEM is the ratio of the point-by-point -point constructed image over the actual scan area of the sample. Because the position of the electron beam can be extremely fine controlled, we can get an extremely large magnification. In addition, unlike visible light, the electron beam can be trimmed much sharper because of its nearly negligible quantum mechanical wavelength. In practice, the size of the focused electron beam can be a nanometer, which is several hundred times smaller than that of visible light wavelength. Hence, the SEM allows for a much higher resolution and the observation of much smaller objects. How do we operate an electron microscope? Here's an example. Let's try to have a close view of a micro device on the substrate. With our naked eyes, we obviously can't see anything. If we place the sample under an optical microscope, we can see much more detail, down to the micrometer-wide electrodes connected to a tiny 2D crystal. But below 1 micrometer, things we would like to see become very fuzzy. Therefore, we use the SEM. To load the sample, we ventilate the sample chamber. After the chamber is vented, we place the sample on a motorized stage. Then we evacuate the sample chamber. The vacuum environment allows the electron beam to travel without scattering with air molecules. Once the sample chamber is in a high vacuum, we turn on a high voltage. This accelerates the electron beam to the sample. Now we switch to the electron detector image and start to see the SEM image of the sample. We can move the motorized stage to see around the device. To get a clear view of the sample, we need to fine tune the beam by making it point like and focusing precisely on the sample surface. After some fine tuning, we get a nice clear image. We can change the magnification, which is done by changing the area scanned by the electron beam. If we scan a smaller area with our fixed beam width, we get a higher magnification. On the other hand, if we scan a larger area, the corresponding magnification would be lower. 
We can also slow down the scanning speed. Here we can clearly see how the electron beam spots scans over the sample's surface line by line. The response of the detector assigns a brightness at each point which constructs the image. A slow scan like this allows the signal to average, which creates a smoother and less noisy image. There are also other ways we can image tiny objects in the lab. We will talk about some other examples in another episode of How It's Done in the Lab.